Hi everybody, I'm back again. I got another video. I would like to explain to you guys the Federal Employee Retirement System and how as a veteran you can use it to your advantage to make sure that you get some sort of pension or you get uh, maybe a better pension or, or whatever. It's just so important to explain and understand it. Too often I see, and I see this in my job too, uh, where I'm working with guys that have eight, 10 years on and I tell them something about their pension and they tell me I'm wrong or they tell me, where'd you hear that? Or things, things like that. And I say, well, have you ever read what your pension actually is? Do you know anything about it? And um, too often there's a lot of misinformation that goes around. So what I did when I got out of the military is I looked into all my different job options and I, and I looked at, um, cause some of these jobs are more demanding. Some of these jobs require relocation, all these things. I wanted to know what I'm getting long-term. So now mind you, I can't give you an accurate explanation as to what you might find that you you'll have in the end. But what I can do is I can give you the basics of the federal employee retirement system and how it relates to you as a veteran. So the basics of the federal employee retirement system are, it's it's based on the high highest three years of your basic salary. So for most people, that's their last three years. So that's what's used to, to make the final calculation. Um, that does not count overtime, that does not count bonuses or special pay or anything. It's just your basic salary. Like quite often, uh, uh, like federal law enforcement, they get a law enforcement accountability pay. Um, that can be like 25% of their salary, I believe. It could be huge. So if your basic salary at your STEP and uh, GS level or whatever, GL level, whatever it is, they're all in FERS, uh, whatever that basic salary step is, that's used for your final average salary calculation. But the actual calculation is basically your high three times years of service, times a pension multiplier. What's a pension multiplier, you say? Okay, well, generally speaking, in almost every federal job, it's 1% for every year of service, okay? 1% for every year of service. But if you're in a specialty field, one that they consider to be like more physically demanding, harder on your body, like firefighter, uh, police officer, any kind of law enforcement usually, uh, you get a 1.7% multiplier for the first 20 years. What does that mean? Whereas if I was delivering mail, I do tw uh, for 20 years, my pension multiplier is now at 20%, whereas yours is at 34%, right? But if one year after that, it, each year after that, it goes back down to 1%. Okay. So these are the normal schedule, excuse my terrible drawing, for retirement. So it's generally speaking, it's minimum retirement age. Let me turn this light on. Minimum retirement age for whatever your agency requires. Usually that's 57 and 30 years or 60 and 20 or 62 and five years. So if you have, if you, if you have, you need at least five years and 62, you need at least 20 years and be 60 years old. Or if you start by the time you're uh, 27, you could be retired at 57. So if you're in one of these special fields, I know I write like I'm a, a, a child, you can uh, do 50 years, a 50 years old or 20 years, or if you got on a little bit late, it's any age once you have 25, um, okay? And like I said, you got the 1.7% multiplier. Now, this is just to give you a basic understanding. Now, what happens with your military time? Your active duty military time, what you can do with that is you're allowed to buy those years. They'll calculate what it's worth um, and how much you have to pay. It's not terribly expensive and I'm told it's totally worth it. Generally speaking, they say you make up for it in about a year of retirement or something. But it, like I said, every case is completely, completely different. So. That said, let's say you have uh, 20 years um, and you're 50, 50 years old, right? And you're retiring and you had four years of active duty service. 
Well, they're gonna take that 1.7% times 20, that's 34%, and then they're gonna add another 4%. You're gonna get 38%. Now, you might ask, what happens if I retired? What happens if I did my 20 years? Well, when it comes time to retire, you're still, you're receiving your, your military pension, correct? You did your 20 years, right? So it comes time to retire, or even before that maybe, you might wanna figure out, you'll be, you can have the choice to forfeit your military pension and have an extra 20% added to your federal pension if it's worth it. But it probably, in most cases, it won't be. Your, if your, your federal uh, salary is very high, you, perhaps if you got out as an as a E6, um, and now you're a GS 15 step 12 or whatever, um, because you got an education, um, you know, that that's a possibility. So what I did was I made a rudimentary, very basic example of what, let's say someone could be. But in this particular case, I put them as a reservist because as a reservist, you can kind of double dip. You can actually get your reserve retirement and your uh, federal employee retirement at the same time. If you are uh, active duty full, full retired, you cannot. You have to pick, do I want those 20 years to apply to my federal retirement or do I want them to apply uh, to, to my active duty retirement? So what, it's one or the other. You'll get, you'll, you'll, you'll either, you know, well, you could still get the two pensions, but your 20 years are not going to be in it. Um, okay, but let's say you're a reservist, and for this example, I said you're a reservist, you did four years, you went to college with your GI Bill, you got a job with NCIS, good for you, great job. Um, you did 16 more years as a reservist, you continued your service as a reservist, um, you went on three deployments, which, by the way, there's also some, a lot of times, some paid military leave if you're a federal employee. Um, generally speaking, it's like 15 days per year or whatever, but uh, where you'll get full pay. And then after that, it's like they pay you some sort of stipend sometimes if your military pay is whatever is different. That It's complicated, but it's not worth getting into. I just gave like a, just a, a for example. So at 57, what your pension might look like. So your reservist that has three deployments or three mobilizations it means you can get your pension at, at uh, 57. You're a GS 13 um, at a step at an appropriate step. Your pension could be around, let's say, at 57 years old, you get $52,000 a year um, to um, not come to work anymore. But in addition to that, let's talk TSP. Now, your TSP that you established in the military, if you didn't. I'm kind of pissed at you, but your TSP, um, you get up to a 5% match on that. Just like the blended retirement that they talk about now, the, which isn't it as bad as it sounds actually, but the blended, just like the blended retirement. But I'm just talking your defined benefit pension. It could possibly be around 52,000 a year and you don't have to pay for health insurance and social security will kick in in a few years. Okay, I hope that was helpful and informative. I know it's somewhat complicated and hard to understand, and I tried to make it as brief as I possibly could. But uh, remember, potentially $52,000 a year to not work anymore. All right, thanks.